Um, so welcome back. Today, we want to continue on the second part of introduction to the concept of data and database management system. So this is the part two of the introduction to the concept of data and database management system. Towards the end of uh, part one, we actually discussed about the hierarchy of data. We discussed about the hierarchy of data, starting from the most uh, smallest of the components, that is uh, character, from character to field, and we look at different fields and different types of data, data types, and from field to records, and from records to a data file. We looked at adding records, deletion of records, uh, data security, and the need for our data to be accurate without having any form of bias. Today, we will talk about data validation. What is data validation? How do we implement data validation? And why do we need to validate data? Most times, we don't have high level experts from the basic till the end. So in doing that, all our means and processes of getting data must be designed in such a way that it is only data that fits into the specification of a field is entered into that field. And I'm talking about primary data here because for secondary data, it must have been done at the primary level, which is the first line of data collection. And what do I mean? For instance, when you are supposed to type in your name, almost everywhere around the world, and now speaking from English language, let me tilt my bias towards English, those who speak English. You don't expect three, four, five, seven written in figures where you expect name because name are in alphabets, letter A to Z. So the attempt by a database administrator to ensure that in the field called name, the choice of characters that go in there are alphabets. It's a way of validating data, at least first layer. After that, there are other layers of data validation. You could now say that for a first name, you don't expect more than 20 or 30 characters depending on the highest number of character of names that you emphasize based on your own operating environment because it changes from one operating environment to another. In the field where you expect dates, you could set your system depending on the database software that you use. And we're still gonna talk about this database software that we use to implement all this because you, can, you have several of them. Microsoft Access, you can use structured query language, other uh, MySQL, other SQL Server, you can use Oracle. There are several other database engines which I'm gonna show you before the end of today's class. So any of them that you're using, you can validate each field to reduce minimally the kind of error that those who input the data can commit. So all the act of doing this is what we refer to as a data validation. That is validating the kind of data 
that goes into each field to be sure that it is the type of data that you're expecting. It might not be the specific data. There could be a mistake of probably putting somebody's name as another person's name. But first and foremost, let's make sure there are characters that exist as name. And that is what we refer to as data validation. Like you can see on the screen, some of the activities that uh, has to do with data validations are alphabet, through numeric check, range check, consistent check. check completeness check for instance nigerian domain you are uh, you're supposed to have a mobile phone a number and our mobile phone is a constant field of 11 digits so you could put in your data validation that your field for collecting phone number should not collect any data either more or less than 11. With that, you've done some level of check to guide the quality of data that is put in because the kind of decision and effects that comes with having the right data cannot be underestimated. And the other way around, a 20 years investment can collapse because of decision made from wrong data. So working with data is not a joke. So all these that you are seeing on the screen, check digit, ring check, consistency check, alpha numeric check, are all ways of ensuring that the data that is entered into our records are validated to be of the type to be of the size and to be of the nature that we expect in each field. Just like I said earlier on, that we have quite a number of database management softwares. And those database management softwares are the software that have been created by different vendors for the purpose of creation, for the purpose of maintaining, for the purpose of access, for the purpose of relating with other applications to carry out a holistic data-related activities in terms of database management system, not data analysis. Database management, creation of the data, storage of data, access to retriever, and a handshaking of that data with other applications that we need to either pick data or send data to that application. And that's what we're talking about. So, just like I see on the system, there are quite a whole of them. Access, otherwise, B3, DB2, is based, fast object. So all these, MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, all these Visual Fox Pro are database management system application. And you can see the name of the database application, the manufacturer or the vendor that is behind that technology and the intention, whether it's meant to be used for personal purpose, for server purpose, for mainframe purpose, or for any other purposes, just as is captured by uh, this uh, material. And uh, let me say that this is not the all that we have. Some we've not had that will still be created by other tech professionals just to help us manage our database very well. Because the concept of what a data is how data evolve and the activities we do with favor with data are actually evolving and changing. And it's not cast in stone. As much as there's research, as long as there's deep thinking, reflective thinking, dynamic thinking, there will definitely be different ways to manage, improve, grow our databases. There will be different ways to manage, improve, grow our databases. Having given us the database uh, management softwares that we have, let's look generally at other things in terms of the things that are major advantages of managing our files using automated system with the use of database management software. 
It makes our data to be very consistent and it reduces unnecessary redundancy. It makes our data to be very consistent and it reduces unnecessary redundancy. In this sense, we're talking about the data we'll need is the one we'll get. And it's not just sitting somewhere that is not accessible. It's not redundant, it's functional, it's life. Because access to it is very easy through any of the computing devices, mobile, desktop, server. It improves also the integrity and the accuracy of this data. Because some of those things that become so cumbersome, working with data in files, in stacks, in cabinets, have become so easy that you can get it on a one stop. Not only that, data science has grown, grown so much that even the existence of those data had made people to do a lot of comparative analysis, do a whole lot of queries, run a whole lot of activities to even compare data of the same size at different locations and bring different insights that will create mini and the, some of the insight from this has been so destructive in terms of the value that put on the table, that they put on the table. And this also helps to improve the rate at which businesses, individuals, private and public organizations adapt to changes because it's either you change or you perish. Now, it improves performance. It has raised the bar in terms of what is expected. And for every organization that you think you're lacking behind, there are consultants around and we are also available to be talked to so that we can guide you and help you to explore value from these areas of opportunity that electronic database management system provides. And it also provides security because security is very key. Security in terms of access to information, security in terms of secure um, a, a privacy of the information. Because some people might not have access to your information in terms of stealing the information, but for the fact that I have access to the content of the information, they can use it for any purpose, either good or bad. So both security and privacy of information is very important. And implementing our database with any of these electronic means actually makes all of that to happen. And it happened in a more professional, more apt and more secured uh, ways. Now, let's go a little bit uh, technical. Database architecture, what is database architecture? Uh, for the purpose of this class, we'll be looking at these three that you are seeing on the screen, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. What is one-to-one? -to -one? Okay, let me give you an example. You have uh, a database for the list of customers in a bank. That is a database keeping the personal data of customers, either individual or corporate. For individual preventure, you have their name, you have the social security number, the country identification number, the agenda, and things like that. Now, on the other hand, you have another table holding their transaction in terms of their accounts, the date they open the accounts, their first deposit, the transaction, both debit and credit and back charges. So when you are relating, for instance, if you want to print a query now, you could relate some information from the table holding the personal information and some from the table holding the transaction information. In that sense, we have a one-to-one -one relationship. In that sense, we have a one-to-one -one relationship that is one table relating to another table. We could also have one-to-many. What is one-to-many? One-to-many is when you have one table relating to more than one other tables. When you have 
one table relating to one other one other table. What do we mean by that? For instance, let's assume there is another table that holds their credit facilities, apart from their transactions. And from the credit facility, you know how much was borrowed, which account was it sent to, what is the repayment plan. And you could also have another table where they have a periodic deposit to set to their vendors separately. In that sense, the table that is having their personal relationship their personal data rather will be relating with each of these other table, the one for their transaction, the one for their credit, the one to service their vendors. In that sense, you're having a one to many experience. You're having a one to many experience. And we're talking about database architecture here. And the next one is many to many architecture. For a many to many architecture, you could have a situation whereby an organization has several uh, projects and each of those projects has several accounts. Each of those projects on its own can have credit accounts, have transaction accounts, and also have vendors that it services. So each of them in multiple ways are relating to each other. In that sense, from the same organization, you have many accounts for different projects, and each of those accounts has their own identity as an account, has their own transactions for each of the accounts, has their own creditors account for each account, and has their own vendors. So in that sense, you are having a many-to-many -many relationship. I don't want to bore you with more technical details because this is actually meant for business people. And I think those technical details are actually meant for uh, core uh, IT and database people. We're talking because the essence of this is to understand the concept of all this on how it helps our business. And right from a one man business to an enterprise to a multinational, all of us need different levels of this database management and application to change the dynamics of how we relate and the things we do. And all of us relate with databases on a daily basis. We all relate with databases on a daily basis. But again, the way we design our databases must ensure that it gets full benefit from all the advantages that an electronic database management system has to offer. Thank you. Uh, on my channels, you'll be having more other videos that speaks on quite a whole lot of interest, spanning business strategy, spanning entrepreneurship, technology entrepreneurship, application of IT in business, information technology, data sciences. And we're creating a new channel very soon on Python, data uh, analysis, business and data analysis, and business intelligence. Hope you will explore this opportunity to make yourself and your ecosystem better. Thank you.